Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome to today's live reading of The Truth About Myths by Giovanna Siniskalki, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Join me. Prologue. The garden door was enchanted. Isabel's mother used to say it granted a princess her heartfelt wishes. As a 10-year-old, Isabella should have stopped believing in myths. She was, after all, at that season in life where princesses shed fantastical beliefs like trees dismiss leaves before fall. Still, Isabel clung to hers, each a ticket to the past, a thread of memory she had no intention of letting go. Enchanted or not, the door was exquisite. While closed, light filtered through the stained glass, pulling over the aquamarine tiles. When opened, it framed the queen's secret garden, an invitation to explore the exotic fruits and flowers. Isabel clapped her hands twice and pirouetted, the necessary ritual for wishes to come true, and closed her eyes firmly. I wish to see them. Tugging her governess's hand, Isabel crossed the threshold. Ripened peaches and wet earth perfumed the air. Feathery leaves swayed to a gentle breeze. Isabel skipped through the fountain and oriental pagoda straight to the pond. Mist floated above the lake. Their calling drew near. Shielding her eyes, Isabel peeked at the sky. They lived there between the clouds and all that blue, a castle of ice and feathers where all the boys were princes and waltzed with princesses to the tune of heavenly chords. Once upon a season, they visited her in the garden. Swinging her straw basket, Isabella scanned the line of trees. Where are they? The governess glanced behind them and tapped her foot on the grass. Poor Marion hated to stand. It made no sense as Isabel, and Isabel knew it was impossible to die while standing. When her mother and father died, they were lying on their beds. Isabel whistled as her brother taught her, then clutched her pinafore, waiting for a reply. <clears throat> Pitter-patter, a splash. A duck left the gnarled oak. Flopping its white wings, it entered the lake and glided toward Isabel. Sighing, Isabel dipped her hand into the basket for the bread. Can we come every day? Oh, dear, your schedule is full. The ducks only came once a year. She couldn't miss their visit. At least while they are here, please. Isabel curled her lips into her most winsome smile. The governor sighed an enormous sigh. If I consult the French teacher, he could arrange for the art history lesson to begin later. Thank you. Isabel hugged the governess, the sin of church incense making her nose twitch. The duck paused below the willow's leaves, mere feet from Isabel and arched its neck. Eager for a closer glimpse, she stumbled forward. The governess held her arm. My, such excitement. We'll see you dunked. A lady should sh learn restraint. Cooing gently, Isabel chose the softest part of the bread. Do you think it's a girl? It's just a duck, dear. Isabel huffed. Just a duck? To Isabel, she was a lovely princess, owner of a silvery dress and tiaras. I shall call her Alva. With a swish, a drake landed in their circle. Big, bulky, and brown, it flung itself atop Alva, shanks digging into her folded wings. Alva protested, trying to unseat the brute, but it chomped on her delicate neck with its red bill. The beast will kill Alva! Isabel shooed and shrieked to no avail. Avail. Lifting her hand high, she hurled bread missiles at the demon duck. Crumbs peppered his ugly feathers, but the drake shrugged them away. Beady eyes glittered. The duck pounded its tail in quick motions. Poor Alva tried to resist, shaking her wings, but he forced her head down until her crown vanished under the water. Out of bread, Isabel grabbed her governess's hand. Marion, do something, please. Alva will drown. The governess shook her head, eyes the size of her brother's tennis balls. Come, the piano master must have arrived. No, Isabel vaulted into the pond, her feet sinking into the mud. Before she could reach the evil duck, the beast jumped from Alba's back, leaving the poor creature disheveled and no doubt bruised. Cackling, the drake flaunted his wings menacingly. Isabel stared, open mouth, cold water seeping into her pinafore as the drake stalked another victim. Marion pulled her from the pond, limbs lax. Isabel let herself be dragged away. I'll go for Lewis. My brother will know what to do. That animal is mad. The governess dug her fingers into her arms. His majesty is extremely busy. I will speak with my brother. She spoke through clenched teeth and stomped her feet. You can't stop me. <coughs> A flush rose on the governess's round cheeks. You must forget about the ducks. Oh, don't you see? That's, 
that is nature's way of they were mating. Chapter one, 12 years later. The excess of a virtue is a vice, Greek proverb. Dear clock on the wall, if you don't speed your turns tonight, you'll sleep without a clog. Isabel muttered under her breath and tore her gaze from the honorary Swiss piece. Facing her audience, she affected a warrior pose, bracing her feet and inflating her chest. Who am I? <coughs> I know, Lady Philippa said, bouncing on the, in the upholstered settee. Artemis, goddess of the hunt. There, this was fun. A quiet night with her maids of honor tucked into her private wing, playing games. Who needs her brother's revelries? Close, but no, Isabel said. Give us another hint, Lady Anne Dawn clapped her hands, a smile lighting up her gentle blue eyes. Isabel tapped, tapped her chin. Who else could she say without spo what else could she say without spoiling the fun? Before, before she could think of the next clue, discordant notes of invaded their privacy. It sounded suspiciously like an orchestra warming up. Not fair. How could she compete with professional musicians? Clenching her hands, Isabel raised her voice, hoping no one else had noticed it. I lived in the Middle Ages. Lady Dolores rose from the settee. Ha! The hero of the great navigation, Vasco da Gama. Isabel lifted her brows at her youngest maid of honor. Dear, the, the game's name is Guess the Powerful Woman. Dolly pouted, patted her blonde curls, and fluttered her eyelids. Oops. The orchestra turned louder. Her ladies talked in parallel, glancing at the door. Isabel was losing their attention. No, she refused to forfeit this battle. Frantically, she gazed at the drawing room wall, searching for a distraction. Light glinted off the ancient coat of armor. <coughs> Thinking fast, Isabel raided the steel knight for a breastplate. Sorry, El Cid, but my brother has an orchestra. Donning the rusty protection, she cleared her throat. The famous quote came to her in a flash of memory. They admonish me to adopt feminine clothes. I refuse. As for other duties of women, there are plenty of other women to perform them. Her ladies in waiting eyed her from their perches, their eyes round, their murmured voices punctuated by the tick tock of the Swiss clock. Lady Dolores yawned. As a last resort, Isabel went to the hearth and placed her foot inside. Oh, please don't burn me. God sent me to make France independent from English tyranny. Joan of Arc, Lady Anne Dawn said. Isabel laughed. You are very right. Everyone clapped. The music outside turned louder. Philippa glanced at the door, her embroidery forgotten. What do you... Excuse me. What do you suppose they are doing tonight? Dancing, smoking, drinking, ma making illicit assi assignations. Who knew what else? Her clique of maid of honors was the creme de la creme of Portuguese society. With her guidance, they would set the standard for high morals and no group of carousing rakes would corrupt them. Nothing appropriate for unmarried ladies, I assure you. I heard his majesty invited Madame Gardenia to sing. She canceled her nightly performance just to indulge them, Dolly said in a stage whisper. Oohs and ahs burst from all around the room. Isabel hoped her brother's taste for music is, was all the virtuosa indulged. Dolly smiled wistful, wistfully. I would die to meet Signori, Signorina Gardenia. We have so much in common. Messier Dumas told the world she was the best soprano, and Vermeil said my nose in Portuguese is the most beautiful. Well, nose. When Vermeil painted Dolly's portrait last season and uttered such an epithet, he did Dolly a disservice. She didn't need her already inflated vanity pushed to new heights. A churchly silence descended upon the room. Competing with a world-class opera singer was unfair. The lantern clock chimed the half hour, still half past nine. Isabel glanced at the offending piece, promising swift retribution. Glancing away, she released a strained breath. She could keep the ladies here until 10 o'clock, then they would retire safe for the night. The music got louder. The soprano reached the Arias Allegro. Dolly perked up. What if... 
what if we went there just for a peek? The ladies dithered in their seats as if they all needed to go visit the garden road. Why would they want to mingle with her brother's court? Rakes, liberals, artists, foreign bonavants. Isabel could imagine their ranks enclosing in on her private rooms, like wolves circling prey, sniffing fresh meat. Instead of being thankful for her protection, her ladies had sullen looks on their faces, as if Isabel had kept them from a tasty treat. A knock at the door brought her heart to a stuttering halt. Isabel rose, half expecting a drunken fellow to breach their retirement. The query bowed deep. Your Highness, the Queen wishes a word. Queen Maria Poya, Queen Maria Pia of Savoy swept into the room. The blue and white of her ball gown accentuated her dark hair and fair skin. Still, why not adopt Portugal's colors? The company of ladies curtsied, black eyes shining feverishly. The queen waved her hand in dismissal and glided to the window where the heavy drapery allowed some privacy. Isabel pitied her new sister-in-law, settling in a foreign court was challenging. To make matters worse, her brother continued his dissolute ways. While she loved Louis dearly and respected him as her king, she could not help but fret. Yesterday, she had witnessed a terrible scene between the royal couple. <coughs> she didn't want the same fate and would avoid marriage for as long as possible. Like all of history's powerful women, Queen Elizabeth I, Joan of Arc, Cleopatra, Isabella would remain unwed. With her fortune and influence, she could do charity, set an example of morality, and do her best for Portugal. Isabel lowered her, her, lowered her grace. Isabel lowered her gaze respectfully. Your Majesty. The Queen had calmed herself, but her smile was strained and did not reach her eyes. Could it be true? Was her brother unwilling to visit the Queen's bedchamber? But why? I thought we were going to enjoy your presence tonight, the Queen said, gazing at her fingernails. Isabel deployed expression number three, gentle but resolute. During her years on public display, she had learned to control her facial movements, maintaining a refined and poised demeanor, no matter the situation. With a subtle brow lift, she could convey an appreciation of flattery, great new greet newcomers, show mild displeasure, and even refuse rancid sardines. One never knew the well-meaning presence. One never knew the well-meaning presence of a subject offered their princess. I apologize, but I must wake up early for my weekly visit to the orphanage. The girls would love if it love it if you could come. How adorable, but I don't rise before noon. Of course, how could I have forgotten? Isabel sighed, crossing her arms above her chest. You requested to speak to me. May I help you? Hurt flickered in the queen's eyes. About last night, what you saw in my bedroom. Isabel clasped her sister-in-law's gloved hands and pressed affectionately. Is there anything I can do? I could. The queen yank yanked her hands away. Just be sure to keep your mouth shut. Queen Maria's nostrils flared, her eyes flashing. She grabbed her skirt and stormed out of the alcove. Isabel watched her leave the room, worrying her lip between her teeth. Her ladies circled her, not even ashamed of their eavesdropping. Oh, that Italian is cruel. She is only jealous of you because you are so popular, Lady Philippa tittered, her chin, trim her chin trembling and prettier. Isabella lifted her palms and bade them back to their chairs. That Italian is our queen, Philippa. At least the at least the appearance had diverted them from the party. Still the room had turned quiet, too quiet. Where is Lady Dolores? The clock started beating the tenth hour. Isabella glared at the offending piece. Now you will do it. 